Hey, Carla, how are you doing today? Hey, I'm good. How are you doing? I'm really good. Um, one of the points that really came to my mind while watching the movie is that, you know, Navo um, builds this like such a world here that it feels like something that is being drawn from like a comic book or something right. that has the previous IP because it is just so drawn out. But it is a completely original creation, which is so exciting. Is that a thrill for you as an actor to be able to do something that is totally original right now where so much of what's coming out is just like IP after IP being for brought sure. up. For sure. No, I mean, you know, I I, always, I I think that, you know, the the filmmakers that inspired me uh, early on and continue to inspire me are auteurs, you know, are sort of that someone who has a vision and can carry it all the way through. Um, and uh, so there's there's no doubt about it. And I do agree, you know, he creates a very, just even on a visual level, a very unique world. Uh, and he's paying homage to wonderful filmmakers that have come before him, uh, but definitely it feels very unique to what he wanted to create. And I think part of that is also because he comes from a country where that, you know, his, his influences are slightly high, like, his country doesn't make this kind of movie. So, so his education came from watching things from, from afar and sort of going, oh, wow, how do I find my way into that world? And a great amount of passion comes from that. Yeah, that's so well put because, you know, I was, I was a huge fan of Big Bad Wolves. Yeah. And I was excited to see this just by seeing his name attached to it before I even saw this like stacked cast that it has too. And I was curious, was the the style of the film, something that was kind of pitched to you and part of the discussion as well when you were signing up for it originally, because it does have such a unique style. For sure. And I had seen Big Bad, Big Bad Wolves as well. Yeah. And so I had a context for him as a filmmaker and kind of knew a little bit of where his aesthetic lied. Um, and uh, um, and so the, the moment when we started talking, Navalt and I, we definitely started talking about kind of how he wanted it to look and, and sort of the world he wanted to create. And even the fact that we got to shoot it in Berlin was cool because um, it's a city in the movie that we don't know. It's sort of a, you know, an unnamed city, but it, it's, it's always helpful. Obviously, part of our job as actors is to create an environment, even if we're on a soundstage in Los Angeles or whatever, but there is something about being away from home and being in a city that has that kind of history, even just architecturally. And, you know, the, the, um, where we shot, where we go down into the basement in, uh, in the library. I mean, that was this really cool, amazing old like bunker, um, in this park in Berlin. And so all of it felt very, um, just otherworldly in a way that I think really helps the movie. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. And I think, you know, that that idea of the history is really there too in the characters because you feel we're being introduced to this whole world, you know, as we said, but you do feel the history that they've all experienced together. And I was curious, yeah. is that something that was part of that discussion as well was really internalizing that history so that we do feel that these characters, you know, have spent decades with each other, knowing each other and have this rich kind of backstory as well. Totally, for sure. I mean, I think that, you know, because there's a relatively small amount of time in a movie like this to create character and yet character is so essential to people, for me, at least as an audience, to have me engaged. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, so there was a definite, like, you know, just in, in sort of little moments, it was key to us that, um, that Sam had grown up in that space. And therefore, when you sort of revisit Tommy the Tomahawk uh, and how it had gotten lost and you can kind of imagine her as a small child playing with this, you know, ax. Uh, and, then, and then even down to the fact that Angela's character, you know, anime is so filled with fire and she, she definitely acts before she thinks. And, uh, and, that, and she will listen to very few people, but she will listen to Madeline when Madeline's like, just calm down, calm down. So you see that sort of the family, like they have picked their roles in their family, even if it's a family that they've found as opposed to a family that they were born into so yeah could you could you talk a little bit more about what Madeline's kind of role is within that little family that they've collected like what her place is compared to the others yeah um when Navot and I started talking you know he had he had sort of laid out a beautiful template for these characters um and he also was sort of wanting them to be filled in even more and, and asking for that from us and so what was uh, I started sort of throwing out some ideas to him and seeing what clicked with his vision of Madeline and one of the things was, it seemed to me that she was raised in sort of like an orphanage, perhaps with nuns, because she had this sense of propriety yeah. about her. And also this real love for children. And it made me think, oh, okay, so this is what happens oftentimes when you're a child.
child with other children in that kind of environment is those are your, the people that you feel the most connected to. So when Sam revisits the library, obviously before Madeline knows exactly who it is, she has this strong sense of, of something very familiar. And then obviously Chloe's character, when she comes in and now there is a child in the museum again, I think for Madeline that is um, a real homecoming. And, and, and it seemed clear to me the difference also is that Madeline, it, it had sort of chosen to not live a violent life for some mm -hmm. time. And that it's not until there's a child there who needs to be protective, that she, that needs to be protected, that she will be the mother cub and sort of stop at nothing. Um, so yeah, so those were sort of elements that, that were important to me to convey in terms of that character. Yeah, it really takes even more than the others. It takes her a while to really draw out that kind of action side of her where she does, you know, come to action. Right. And, you know, you are somebody who in your career has, you know, done a lot of action work and you seem to be really drawn to it. Is that is getting into that kind of genre filmmaking something that's really exciting for you and appeals to you a lot as an actor? You know, it's so funny, right? Because you realize in life, like our lives in some ways take us on a journey that we don't know what they're going to be, right? Yeah. Same in career. Um, you know, when I first started acting, uh, my influence very was so tangible and specific, which was I saw I saw Sophie's Choice and I saw Silkwood um, when I was 13. I saw both of those. Yeah. And I was like, this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. I saw these two women who had nothing to do with me seemingly in terms of my life. And yet I saw the world through their eyes. And I thought, wow, that's what that's what that can do. It can give that kind of empathy. You can sort of see the world through someone else's eyes. And so that's been the allure for me in acting from the start. And then I found myself, you know, sort of in one of my first successes as an actor was, was um, Troop Beverly Hills and then The Son-in-Law and, and Spin City with Michael J. Fox. And there were all these comedies. So I thought, oh, I didn't know I was going to do comedy. And then, yeah. you know, and then somehow I ended up sort of falling into a, a world of graphic novels being made into movies. And and so the truth of the matter is, I don't know, at this point, I think the thing that was the most important to me and remains the most important is that I can be a transformational actor and be believed in different roles and not known for only one thing. So, um, so no, I haven't intentionally <laughs> uh, made those decisions. Uh, I do love, I think I am a, a physical actor on some yeah. level in the sense that I do um, it's also one of the reasons that I'm interested in, you know, exploring characters sexuality and people ask that question a lot and, and part of it is because I think part and parcel we are, um, you know, we are these sort of um, visceral creatures and that, and, and for sure action and, and, you know, is, is an area in which you can explore that so, um, so I do, I, and I have a lot of fun doing it, that's for sure. Yeah. Yeah, is that something that really does, you know, appeal to you? I'm always interested in actors who do such like a variety of work within genre as well, because, you know, somebody like you, you bring character to genre. You're not just, you know, this like vessel for the action to play out. You really do ground the genre elements in feeling like the character and the real person. And I think, you know, as we see in this, that makes such an impact on the audience because you believe that that's a real person, you know? Right and you feel that impact, is that something that you really like to do is to be able to draw out the dimensionality of a character within a genre kind of framework? For sure, it's thank you, it's, it's for saying that. It's, it's one of the, it's, it's a really interesting challenge to me. You know, I think I'm always yeah. looking for what is the, what is my challenge here and how do I find something where I can elevate it? Um, and, and obviously, you know, the best version is when you have a, a great script and a great director and, and, and that, you know, that, that for sure is is um, imperative, but also it's sort of like what, okay, they're looking at the big picture. What can I do? What is my part in telling this story? Um, and I think each thing brings, um, you know, it, I always have to come at it from character just because I don't know how else to do it. Um, but it's funny because then my, my life in the theater has been much more classics of Eugene O'Neill and Tennessee Williams and Arthur Miller and, um, and, uh, and most recently, um, you know, I've, I've, I guess, I guess what I've chosen theatrically is just much more um, sort of challenging in an entirely different way. So there's a really nice balance there um, for me. So yes, but in these, it is. I, I think in a movie like this, it was about sort of how can I find the richness uh, within a limited amount of screen time because it's, you know, it's a big action movie. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You have to find, you have to make that impact like fast so that we yeah. feel the character. Yeah. And I think, I think that you're so good at it and you're good at choosing roles where you're able to do that because, you know, I, 
I'm 31. So I'm kind of in this like the spot where Spy Kids came out when I was 10. Right. And it was yeah. the greatest thing I had ever seen in my entire life. Right. And like I was absolutely obsessed with those movies and I still am. And something that's really like thrilling for me is when I meet somebody who's my own age and yeah. Spy Kids gets brought up, our faces like light up. It's just right. like passion that we have. For you as somebody who gets to take part in that, is that just like awesome to be a part of something that has endured so much and been something that like a whole generation just loves and connects to and feels an attachment to. Totally. I mean, what's nice, right, is that Spy Kids, they're actually good movies. Yeah. Um, and they and 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 it was also sort of a revolutionary moment where the kids got to be the heroes. And I think that that, you know, and they also had cool parents. So they weren't like, you know, there was sort of like a different aesthetic again that came back to the sort of the full circle conversation about auteurs. But like that was incredibly organic to Robert Rodriguez. You know, um, that was very much the story that he wanted to tell that came out of him naturally. And um and so there's no doubt. I mean, first of all, I will say that kids are the most honest fans, right? Because if they don't like something, they'll be like, ah. you know, so, so like always to see kids, even now who love Spy Kids, you know, it's, it's somehow it's a timeless movie. So, and then to obviously see people your age and, you know, it's like, it's, it's a, it's a really cool thing to have that kind of like, I agree with you that it almost feels like um, a lot of people are like, I feel like you were with me in my childhood like like you actually like you're like you're somebody that I know because of that because you're part of like the fabric of my being and that I, I don't take lightly and I'm so um incredibly appreciative of that um but uh um but yeah it is it's it's a wild it's a wild thing and I think that uh it's also something funny because at that moment I was 27. I was never on any of the lists for that movie because I was 10 years too young for it because I was supposed to have had, you know, a career as being a spy for 10 years and then had kids who were now, you know, and uh, and I remember Robert looking at me and he said, you know, if we do our job right, no one will ever question it. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, and it is it's the it's the cool thing about being able to create illusions. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's, it's, I mean, that's still, those are movies that I still watch today. Like if they're on HBO, I'll yeah. just watch the whole way through and I still love them. And I've got to wrap it in a moment, but I'd love to kind of end by talking about that idea of generations, because as you said, like, that's something that I really grew up with. And I saw, I've got to follow your career as I've been growing older yeah. and it's been such a thrill. And this movie has obviously like feminism and representation for women is such a big part of this movie, but specifically, you know, it's not just one woman taking on the world, it's right. three generations of women. For and sure. I wanted to ask you how that feels for you to get to be a part of this movie that is about several generations of women, you know, joining forces to just kick ass and like yeah. own their own, you know, voices in their own agency like that. Yeah, it is. It's it's a very cool thing. Um, I think one thing that women are particularly good at is creating family and yeah. sustaining family, and uh, and and yet sort of the acknowledgement that being a parent, there's no rule book. So there are going to be mistakes will be made. Um, and yet that women will be able to reconnect and triumph through that. So I do love that within a movie that is a badass action movie that sh people should just go and like have so much fun watching that there also, it has something to say, you know, it has something to say without being preachy. Um, I also love that um, all of us, you know, like there are, you know, uh, more than half the cast is over 40 years old. And yet that's not something that's ever talked about. And I think that's the other thing is that men are so rarely defined by their age and women are so often defined by our age. And I have no you know, qualms with any age that I am or have been or will be, um, but I don't, but I do take task with it being needing to be a defining thing of every character, you know, and that you have to be a grandmother or a, or a, you know, a stepmother or a sister or, a, you know, whatever the thing is, or the boss, because she's this, you know, whatever it is. So I appreciate that that's just a non-issue of this movie and that it's just about these women of all different ages finding their way towards their truth, you know? Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. That's something that I love so much about the movie. Like I did genuinely love the movie and I love the fact that it is, brings in those elements without having it to be like about that. It's just, first and foremost, it's a kick-ass action movie, yeah. but it has so many of these layers as well. And I've got to wrap up, but I just want to say, you know, congratulations on the movie. And thank you for speaking to me today. Cause as I said, I've been a huge fan for such a long time. And it's just such like a gift to be able to speak with you. Well, I'm so appreciative. And this was, a, so it was so much fun talking to you. So I really do appreciate it as well. Of course. Yeah. Thank you so much, Carla. Have a great one.